This is a contest entry for the hardest contest ever, ever in the vinyl community. Rob Sound Strange, who is Irish, who lives in Spain, created this contest. His channel is pretty wonderful. His channel uh, is an education in and to itself. Uh, he is one of the uh, three collaborators collaborators uh, that are sponsoring the Blue Note 4000 series of jazz, but he shows jazz, avant-garde, and a lot of classical music. He probably has the best pronunciation of any classical composer, non-English name than anyone. And what's great about his channel, uh, he talks about history, obviously the music and how it relates to history and art and how not everything is so uh, Anglo-centric, which he's totally right about. So this <laughs> has two main parts. The first, it's subjective. The first five questions, it's easy, we can answer. Basically, we give our own opinion. And the other five are about him and his interest, and we have to kind of guess. So I'm gonna do a typical Mazzy thing on the end and just make this shit up because I have no idea <laughs> of answers to those questions, but I'll do it in my way because What's great about this, and what I love about um, this contest too, he's not doing the pull a rabbit out of a hat, pull the answers out of a hat like a friggin' raffle. He is judging this like all good contests and real contests. He will make the decision, unless he has a panel of uh, Spaniards out there maybe um, making this decision. So, without further ado, the first question is name a record that is of historical, um, I'm sorry. The first question is name a record that's sort of based on um, literature, that has a literary connection. So um, I have one artist and I'm gonna weave it into two different things. And one is 1978's Kate Bush song that's on this album, The Kick Inside. I heard this song, Wuthering Heights, the first day I arrived in London, my very first time in England in 1978, and uh, it was just at the top of the charts. Now, um, Wuthering Heights was written by Kate Bush. She was, I think, 17 years old or 18 years old when she wrote it, and it's based on Emily Bronte's book, Wuthering Heights, um, about the longing in the Yorkshire moors uh, in England, the foggy mist of the moors. Kathy, it's me. Heathcliff, it's me. I'm Kathy. Now, I never read the book, but I am a huge fan of the Laurence Olivier film, Wuthering Heights, and it's such a beautiful and tragic love story. So Kate Bush is um, a literary mook. She just eats it up and writes a lot of things. She also um, has written uh, music based on uh, uh, Tennyson. Uh, she, she wrote uh, this album, The Sensual World, which is sort of loosely based on uh, James Joyce's Ulysses. So um, a very kind of a sensual, sexual world. And if you know about, if you've ever read Ulysses, which I had, um, which um, have read, uh, is really interesting. So that's question number one, um, literary. Question number two, uh, a record or records that are based on historic, that that are very historically centric um, in history. And I'm going to show the band. Canadians, except for Levon Helm, and these great songs that Robbie Robertson wrote. A lot of the songs he wrote, or a handful of songs, are really about um, the, um, the Confederacy and uh, the Civil War in the United States. I shall be released, but anyway, especially on this album. The Great Divide, The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down, which um, is sort of a, based on the protagonist who is uh, singing the song and talking about uh, what life was like um, in the South in the last years, uh, the last year of, of the Civil War in Virginia. So um, this, Robbie Robertson wrote a lot about the South Unfaithful Servant, Lookout Cleveland, Jeremiah Surrender, Whispering Pines, 
but um, across the Great Divide. But the night they drove old Dixie down, I love that this um, great Canadian writer wrote and knew seemed to know more about uh, the Civil War and the Confederacy uh, against the North, uh, and um, taught me a lot actually. So. I'll be back with the next round of questions because this is friggin' complicated. Of course, I'm doing this in all the wrong order. That was question three, my last one. But the next one is album covers that are artistic, that basically show artwork, uh, historic artwork. And I'm going to go with Pearls Before Swine, Tom Rapp, dirgy folk band of the late 60s, early 70s, original on ESP Records, went to Warner Brothers Records. Uh, the cover here, is the front cover of The Triumph of the Death by Peter Bruegel the Elder. Um, this is, of course I'm forgetting. I'm totally forgetting it, so one moment please. John Everett Malaise's Ophelia. Oh, wrong one. This one, the cover, very famous painting. They really used a lot of classic paintings on all their, uh, or most of their covers, until Tom Rapp's uh, photo was on that. And then they use a um, Hunt of the Unicorn, a tapestry from the uh, Metropolitan Museum of Art on this cover. Uh, this was on Warner Brothers as well. Again, their work is folky, dirgy, but um, there's also another one of their albums. They use a Hieronymus Bosch painting. So some of their album covers are, are, are beautiful. Some are horrific in terms of uh, classic uh, artwork, classical paintings. Um, you could also throw in New Order, uh, their debut album with a beautiful vase of flowers from the National Portrait Gallery in London that Peter Zaville, uh, the uh, designer for uh, factory records, used on that. Of course, there's been plenty of classical uh, pieces of artwork used for record covers. Jeff Beck's um, uh, The Apple on the cover, um, that's uh, also a wonderful classic record. And um, that is, let me grab that. Let me just do a little whack-a-mole here. Um, Never mind. What a great record cover. This is about Rene Magritte and um, uh, several uh, covers or, or paintings by Magritte turned up on paintings. The Young Rascals, uh, there's a f silhouette of a bird flying and that's a Magritte and that's all on there. You've seen his bowler hat images on uh, sport on other covers. So um, that's the artwork. This is a complicated contest, Rob, and I know that's why you, um, that's, that's why you proposed it. I love it. Okay, the next uh, question is show an album that is not sung in English, sung by uh, another language outside of English. So um, I've showed these artists on my channel before. Uh, this has been one of my very favorites. And uh, Dave, local bandography, turned me on to this. I think it was one of his favorite albums of last year. Uh, artists from Spain. Enrique uh, Montefusco, Diagonal, a gorgeous kind of rock and pop record, very majestic, amazing arrangements, and what a beautiful voice. So this is on my turntable constantly, this record. So Enrique uh, Montefusco out of Spain. And then the other one, uh, I'm in love with the uh, uh, pop French uh, ingenues of the uh, 60s, pretty much and uh, Francois Hardy, uh, any one of her records I could have picked, but kind of a folk pop sensation. Yee Yee was developed, or they kind of coined the terms Yee Yee from Yeah, 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 the Beatles. So there's always a Beatle connection from the early 60s, and obviously Serge Gainsbourg was instrumental in a lot of productions of these sort of models, 
be, who became singers, uh, but they had beautiful voices. Even actors uh, like Bridget Bardot uh, made several records uh, in the pop, uh, French pop uh, form. Jane Birkin as well, who was uh, married to Serge Gainsbourg. But I'm going with uh, this one, which is called Tous les garçons et les filets. And Rob would definitely pronounce that better. So uh, that's that one. Now, a record that taught you something, and I showed this, I did a classical collaboration in the Four Corners video I did. And when I was, uh, you know, 1968, my dad took me, my father took me to see 2001 A Space Odyssey. Obviously, I was a big sci-fi nut. I'm that generation in America that grew up with the space program, the Mercury 7. So the space program, Mercury, Gemini, Apollo, that was an amazing thing. Um, you know, when there's something to look forward to um, in the country, of course, and the Beatles came along and music came along. But going to this, see this, um, one of my all-time favorite films uh, by Stanley Kubrick. But the music, and I got the soundtrack uh, soon after it came out. Turning on to this classical music, um, uh, Richard Strauss, also Sprach Zarahustra. But I really got into Gheorghe Leggetti. Um, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but uh, Legati or Legetti, I think it sounds like. His choral arrangements and 20th century compositions that were moody, ethereal, spatial, uh, used in the scene when uh, the spaceship is kind of hovering, uh, uh, going to land on the moon. Also, um, the um, Gain Ballet Suite by Adagio. And, of course, another uh, Ligeti piece, Atmospheres, um, when the um, monolith is hovering over into the um, galaxies beyond and, and other worlds. So that Ligeti stuff, I'd play this at home, and it became almost like psychedelic classical music to me. That's just my interpretation of it. But I learned so much about uh, classical music. At least I got into it, introduced to it, aside from uh, learning uh because of the Beatles' help movie, Beethoven's Ninth Ode to Joy Symphony and Wagner's uh, Act Three, Prelude to Lohengrin. I got into those um, categories of classical, but I got into this, got more into the avant-garde uh, in the 70s and George Crumb and then uh, Harry Parch, uh, who created, his, built his own instruments and wrote compositions for those instruments. So that is, those are the first five questions now. The hard part is after this, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to answer these, or, but we'll see. I'll just do stuff for entertainment purposes for you, Rob. Okay, Rob, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. If you were born in 1970, you'd be 50 years old, and I'm going to say you were born in March 1970. Um, a little light there. March 1970, so you're 50 years old. 50. Maybe your 40s, maybe your mid 50s. I can't tell anymore. I'm 66. What do I know? So, because you think it's such a cool record, probably, I think March of 1966 would be Bitches Brew. And I'm, I picked this just because it rhymes with Bitches Brew, and that's Deja Vu. So, Bitches Brew and Deva, uh, Deja Vu. Now, since you're playing acoustic guitar, which that'll be the last question. Um, you kind of do that folky singer-songwriter guitar thing. Um, I'll answer that question in the end, and I'm going to make that up because I have no idea that question either. So um, that's what I'm going to throw out there as uh, Maslow's guest, guess, guesstimate for you. Now, the next question is... Da -da 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 -da. I'm, I'm not cheating here. I'm looking at your questions here. On my laptop. So, the two composers of of whom I have the most records. I'm going to say Shostakovich. Shostakovich and Stravinsky. Two S's. I'm just throwing those out. It wouldn't be, I mean, it could be Beethoven and Bach, but those seems too... Too pedestrian for you, Rob. I think you're going to go for the little off kilter. Maybe Wagner. Wagner, maybe. Um, but again, the German thing, 
you might do. Of course, you can pronounce it better than I could. So it could be that. So pick any one of those. If I'm close, great. If I'm not, you know, screw it. Which album was the main inspiration for my starting uh, to play guitar? Now, um, I think you started in Spain. It's, it's, it seems like that's something I can't see you had been playing. I don't think you're by, and this is no offense, but by the way you play, I don't think you were playing in Ireland. I think you, when you got to Spain, you started playing. Now, I don't know how long you've been in Spain. Could it be Paco La Hachilla? You're not doing um, classical guitar like uh, Segovia or flamenco guitar like uh, Paco. It's based on Spanish, but you're doing folk stylings. So, um, and I don't think it'd be like someone like Neil Young, as great as Neil Young is. I mean, maybe it is Neil Young. He has a nice picking style. He's not this fantastic guitar player, but he's uh, uh, he's really great at what he does. So it could be Neil Young if you're going in that direction. And I know you like Neil Young, so it could be that. Um, in which f the artist wrote five tunes, name the tunes. I have no idea. John Martin, it's not Neil Young. Those aren't Neil Young tunes. Um, it's not like the English UK, uh, late 60s, like Bert Jans or John Renborn. Uh, they'd be too complicated and picky. And it's obviously not John Fahey in that area. It's more of a rhythm -y thing, unless you're trying to um, screw me up and just do the rhythm thing because you don't know how to play lead guitar. It's like, I don't either very well. I can play the rhythms and the acoustic things. So who would that be? You're not a James Taylor. That seems too pedestrian. No offense to James Taylor. Um... You know, it's definitely someone that sounds late 60s, early 70s. Uh, it sounds actually more American uh, than British, your guitar playing. So my guess would be an American. It's not, Cat, I mean, Cat Stevens is British. Uh, but it's in that kind of singer-songwriter kind of guitar playing, at least in the way I heard you playing it. So I'm making all this shit up, so I better stop now. So I wanted to get this, uh, you know, right off the bat to you, Rob, because um, I love watching you. I'm putting a link below. Listen, Rob just hit uh, 500, give or take, subscribers. I think if you want some really interesting and challenging music and some direct, direct response, uh, like no lie, uh, speak, the way he talks to you is so direct and so honest, which um, just is, I'm really attracted to that kind of um, presentation personally. So I'm a fan, Rob. I love your uh, classical showcases. I watch you and I follow you on Instagram, and I know about it. I know a lot of the records by at least by name and title, had, having sold classical records in the '70s and record stores. But I don't know a lot of the music, and I can't talk about it. So if you want um, some classical uh, speak, some great jazz stuff, uh, he talks about the Blue Note records and the jazz stuff. Watch uh, Sound Strange, it's that same as channel, Rob's channel. I've been going on way too long. This is probably too long. You don't want to watch all these videos. Thank you, Rob. Mazzy loves you. And congratulations on 500 subscribers. And um, adios, amigo.